Let's get to reading. So his urban legend experiment became real. That's quite the story. I think he stalled his own trial just so that he could watch this case in its entirety. But he did say he felt responsible. He must feel conflicted. Honestly, I have no idea how Sakimoto must be feeling right now. An ordinary person like me wouldn't understand a person with such a thirst for knowledge. Hey, I wanted to ask you something. I wanted to, I wanted to ask you something, Gigi. How do you think something? I can read it. I can only guess. Do you still want to hear it? I thought for a moment to choose my words carefully. I think he's pretty pleased with himself. Yeah, probably. A monster he invented has become real oh, and is wreaking havoc. It even has the authorities baffled. He doesn't seem thrilled about the urban legend himself, but he does seem pleased that the legend he created has succeeded. Sekimoto probably just wanted the opportunity, opportunity to observe this process as closely as possible. Well, I think both Blightman and Sekimoto are out of their minds. What do you think would happen if Blightman ever met his creator, Sekimoto? Do you think they'll get emotional? Not a chance. Guess you're right. Sekimoto would probably have that stupid smirk on his face while Blightman sticks a pair of scissors in his eyes. Things went quiet for the rest of the trip. Our destination was on the outskirts of Town C. Oh, this is one of my favorite bits. The area used to be all government-sponsored housing, but recently many people left. It's most likely shut something. Hey, Kazamori, what should we do when we get there? We don't have a lot of time, and we don't actually have a warrant for any of this. It's already pretty dark. Detectives don't normally visit people during these hours. But what if this actually turns out to be an important witness? He might be holding crucial evidence. That might be better as two sentences. I think we've been too hasty. Hey, Gigi, I need a straight answer from you. Sure, what's the question? This person we're seeing, that Takenaka guy, do you think he's a normal person? I remained silent while Kazamori put his hands in his pockets. If you get a bad feeling, oh, baby, don't hesitate to use your baton. Baton, ha ha ha, okay. <sighs> this is one of my favorite bits. Wow, this looks horrible. This is worse than I expected. I couldn't even believe my eyes as we got out of the car. All of these houses looked the same and were all run down. There were weeds growing all over the place, showing that there hadn't been anyone living here for a while. <laughs> Gigi, which one's Takenaka's house? The innermost one. We slowly and quietly made our way to the house. That must be the place. I point out the house located on the far end of the street. We can't see any light coming from the house. There was only silence. Everyone in sight must already be asleep. I surveyed the house where Takenaka Shinichiro supposedly lives. There was a pile of mail on the front porch. There were also tools outside covered in dust. Yeah, the curtains were completely drawn and shutters weren't closed. Kazumori cautiously approached the house and peeped through one of the windows. Kazumori, what do you see? Oh shit! Gigi, call for backup! Kazumori was shouting as he rushed towards the front door. He tried to open the door, but it was locked. Mr. Takenaka, this is the police! Open the door! Open up now! Damn it! You wanna go, Gigi? He's moving. Without hesitating, he pulled out his nightstick and broke the window to release the lock on the door. The rotting still air that had filled the house suddenly poured out, and with it, large quantities of flies. It was a nauseating smell of dust and decay, like someone hadn't been taking out the garbage and, st and it started to rot. Kazumori and I illuminated the room with the flashlights we brought with us from the car. Here it comes! And we see... Dun dun dun! Ugh! That's so me. There were three dead bodies, an older couple and a relatively young man. The young man must be Take Nakashinshiro. Due to the high humidity, their skin had already started to turn purple where it touched the floor. The bodies had already started to decompose. Big, fat maggots are feasting on the bodies, undoubtedly because of the humidity. Some of the victims' body parts were eating completely to the bone. I could taste the bile on the back of my tongue, but I tried not to gag as I don't want to contaminate the crime scene. Gigi, it happened again. <laughs> I 
I followed the beam from his flashlight and I saw the faces of the victims. It was clear that a lot of time had passed since their death. Judging from their state, their eyes had been badly mutilated. There was also a pair of scissors laying right beside them. Oh, it's the next thing. From their slightly open mouths, I could see that their tongues had been cut out. Blind man? There's actually two pairs of scissors, so that should be plural. With this, this is the third incident. You're wrong. Don't you see how long these people have been here? These people are probably the first victims. Holy shit! Gigi, can you believe this? It means Blind Man has been in this town even longer than we thought. We didn't have a clue. This serial killing bastard serial killing bastard has been preying on unsuspecting victims all this time. Yeah, there's two pairs of scissors, so it should be plural. While Kazumori was cursing Blind Man, I could hear the faint sounds of sirens approaching. If only... If only Takenakashi and Chiro was still alive, we could have gotten to the bottom of this. But the monster hiding in this decaying town was predicting our every move. This happened a while ago, so he must be sitting back and enjoying the show. I never thought it would turn out like this. We gave our statements to the first investigation division about what we found. They'll open up a new investigation. After only hearing a few words of what we had to say, we were disregarded and ignored. When the department head said we could leave, Kazumori bat-mouthed them, saying they were hyenas taking, trying to take the credit. Oh, thank you for the business! We got back to the office and immediately sat down at our desks. It wasn't long before we passed out. Hmm. Oh, Mandy, did I miss the resub? Thank you, M. Bellman, thank you. Don't know how many hours passed by, but I awoke to something nudging me. Something? Someone? As I opened my eyes, I saw Kuroda and Misuzu staring at me with concern. Ah, excuse me. Good morning. Yawn! What a fun night last night. We both stood up and stretched our bodies. That was sarcastic. <laughs> Great job yesterday, you two. I heard all about it. We've made some serious headway in the investigation. They've identified the victim found on the mountain road. Oh yeah, the granny. Victim's name is Watari Kurumi, age 78. Her registered address was none other than the this, yeah same place where the chief director committed suicide. Yes. Cause of death was shock from having both her eyes removed by scissors. It's the same as the first victim. Not blood loss from her tongue missing? First investigation division is examining the scene as we speak. Also, we were able to identify the three bodies you discovered in the residential district. Takenaka Kozo, age 58, Takenaka Chizuko, his wife, and Takenaka Shinchiro, 28. Occupation is unknown. So now we got a grand total of four bodies. They've all been pretty easy to identify compared to Tamura. I'll have her explain that. Tachibana, please go ahead. All right. Finding the identities of the most recent victims was relatively easy. Unlike Tamara, all the victims had their teeth and were inside their own homes. For identifying Mrs. Watari, there was someone who recognized her in the vicinity and we were able to confirm based on her fingerprints. As for the Takenaka family, we were able to identify Kozo from his work ID and Chizuko from her dental records. And the son, Shinshiro Sekimoto, was able to confirm his identity from a photo. So they showed Sekimoto the deck decomposing body. He must be pretty torn up about all of this. Did he say anything about Takenaka? He had a bitter smile and said, I didn't think this is how I'd see him again. Mm, I see. That's right, he hasn't seen him since he went missing during that, during that experiment about the spread of the urban legends. He might have been pretending to show some vanity with a bitter smile. I wondered how he was really feeling. That's all I got. Any questions? Did you find anything about the murderer? Any news from forensics? I've only recovered the pair of scissors. I've analyzed them, but I haven't gotten any results yet. Those types of scissors can be purchased almost anywhere, so we can't find the killer that way. Damn, we need some kind of breakthrough. It's so quiet, there's no music. Calm down, getting angry won't help us solve this case. While we're running all over the place, he's out there mocking us. How the hell do you expect me to stay calm? He might not have chosen the best of words, but he was right. It was true that we were going nowhere in this investigation. It was like it was reading Sekimoto's mind. The murderer was always one step ahead of us. Yeah, Blindman is reading his creator's mind. However, there are still various tests underway, and they're still going. They're they're still going over the crime scene. Something might pop up. Misuzu continues to explain. Forensics was still analyzing the fibers and anything else they could find on the victim's clothing. 
She said that there was a good chance they'd find some sort of tra trace of the murderer from direct physical contact. It can be dangerous to jump to conclusions, but there's a good possibility of there being more than just one murderer. I don't think it could be different killers. I can't see those murders, murders as separate crimes. Oh. Kuroda's words struck me like lightning. No, separate crimes. That might be possible. What, Gigi? What's wrong? It's like what Misuza just said. We can't rule out the possibility of multiple assailants. Why? Do you have something to back that up? Yeah, my main reason being... Here it comes. The murder method was sloppy, the bodies weren't naked, they still have their teeth. Yeah, so... The thing here being is that it was totally different. The first victim we found, Tamura, he was naked, they took out his teeth, uh, so they really went like all out to try and delay us identifying him. And then these guys, they were in their own home, they still had all their clothes on, they had IDs on them, so it was super easy. So I wouldn't say it's exactly the murder method that's sloppy, because it's the same murder method, but the second or third one could both work. Um, so I'll go with... Mm, naked. <clears throat> Victim's bodies weren't naked this time. Oh. Sure. What? Naked? Oh, right. The first victim was found naked, but these bod bodies weren't. I think the culprit has a well-calculated plan ready for Tamura. Had a plan ready. But we were also shocked by the killer's methods that we didn't notice. Um, could you be a little more specific? Alright, in other words... I gathered my thoughts and continued. Am I gonna do like a thing? Think about it. Remember back where, where Tamura was found. The victim had been stripped naked to help remove any possible evidence. That's true. It did take pretty long time to identify him because of all the extra steps the murderer had taken. But this time it's different. It only took roughly a day to identify the victims. Victims were local townspeople found in their own home with countless things to identify them with. <laughs> That's exactly what I just said. <laughs> this is true. Maybe the murderer slipped up this time. Killer didn't hide any of the evidence like with Tamura. There's no reason not to conceal those kind of things. I could see it more clearly as I explained my thoughts. The methods were very different indeed. There was no consistency in blind men's behavior. This is why I think there are multiple murderers. This is just what I was thinking. I didn't have enough concrete evidence to back this up. It's so frustrating that we still have no idea who Blind Man really is. Well, whatever. Still have a ton of work to do. Ah, I'm so sick of this. As he said that, Kazumori reached for the documents on his desk. I tracked what he was doing and a particular document caught my eye. Oh, yeah. It was one of the many pictures the CSI guys took at the crime scene. But it wasn't the victim that caught my attention. It was a picture of the bystanders behind the yellow caution tape. Hey, Misuzu, what are these pictures? Oh, those pictures are of the press who were at the crime scene. We don't actually need these for the murder investigation. These guys are like a blight. All they do is interrupt investigations. Just like Kazamori complained, most of the people on the photograph are press holding their cameras. Except... They were like bloodhounds sniffing for any bit of information they can get to report on the latest developments. But what caught my attention was, was a townsperson standing near the back of the crowd. I heard these kinds of pictures are helpful for catching serial arsonists. That's right, those narcissistic bastards have a strong tendency to come back and admire the chaos at the crime scene. It's just a habit of mine to take pictures, even if they're of no use later. My first supervisor told me over and over again that it was important to collect everything you could. Anything could prove to be useful later down the road. He told me not to miss a thing at a crime scene. He always said that negligence is our biggest enemy. While I listened to Misuzu, I reached out for more pictures of bystanders. I looked at the people around the crime scene at the Watari case. One of them was also at the Takenaka house. And then I looked at the picture of the bystanders at the crime scene of the Tamura case. Wait. Hold on a moment. This person is the only one present at all three crime scenes. Really? Who? I lined up the pictures to point out the person. It's an overweight male with a pale face. Ah, you're right. This guy must have a lot of free time on his hands. Wait. Oh, this guy. Let me see that. Mm. 
Kuroda grabs one of the photos and examines it carefully. After a while, he lets out a sound like he's found something. Gigi, I know who this man is. It's the youngster from the Kanayas. Yeah, it's him. It's Kanaya Hidomu, alright? He sucks. Kazumori recognized him too. Ah, oh, he really sucks. What can you tell me about him? He's the only son of this town's landowner. He's a bit of a handful. Kuroda tried to speak of the son with ambiguity. Kazumori, on the other hand, came out swinging when Kuroda stopped talking. He graduated from a vocational school in Tokyo, but after that he came back here. He couldn't find a job and he's been unemployed since. This guy's trouble. Such a pain in the ass. All he does is surf the net, criticizing any anything and everything he can. Anything and everything, yeah. I examined the picture more closely this time. The picture was taken from far away, so I couldn't make a clear assertion, but it looked as though he was gloating. When we saw this, we all looked at each other. He's suspicious. Can't tell if he's guilty, but he's definitely suspicious. I agree, he looks suspicious. Do you agree, Kuroda? Wait, just hold on a second. We can't just bring him in for questioning just because he was visiting a crime scene. We can't just go to his house without a warrant. He could have just he could have just coincidentally been walking past all of the crime scenes. We could just pay him a friendly visit. Let's see how he reacts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he's a nervous character who always plans things carefully. He if he acts nervous, that'll be proof that he's hiding something. Don't worry, you won't have to go through all that trouble. The SLU is just a support division. We can let the first division take care of it. You and I both know that they'll just ignore our report. You agree with me, right, Gigi? What do you think about all of this? Please let us do it, sir. I'll keep an eye on Kazumori. We won't pick a fight. But still, I think... Hey, Sky! Nothing is lost if we don't get anything out of it. And if we, don't, if we do find something we can work with, we could put him under investigation. Are you sure you can do this, Gigi? Yes. I wasn't sure, to be honest, but I wanted to seize this opportunity. So far, so good. I haven't really found a spelling error. Okay, go then, but proceed with caution. Promise me that. Got it? High spirits, Kazumori and I both excitedly responded at the same time. Yes, sir! We headed over without delay. Kazumori already knew this guy pretty well and summed up what he knew in the car. I'm really fed up with this guy. He's a handful. What do you mean by that? If I had to describe him in just one word, it would be virus. Virus? He talks way too much and is into some pretty strange stuff, and his head is filled with the weirdest knowledge. <sighs> He's super suspicious of everything and everyone. The first time I met the guy, I tapped him on the shoulder to say, Hey, guess what he did? Don't tell me he claimed you broke his shoulder or something. Close, but not that. He actually grabbed me by the arm. Cousin Woody started to reenact the scenario. You just hit me on the shoulder, didn't you? It's called a tap. What the hell are you grabbing me for? I know that you're a detective. You shouldn't treat me like that. I have my own connections, you know. Huh? What are you talking about? Everyone in this town knows I'm a detective. It's an offense to touch an innocent citizen without prior consent while being on duty. Ha <laughs> ha. You're lucky I'm not bleeding. That would be considered assault. Ha ha ha. What are you even talking about? Are you high? Ha. <laughs> not only have you assaulted me, but you also insulted my pride. I'm going to file a complaint against you. Oh. Alright, go ahead. You do that, you little punk. Uh, database. <laughs> he meowing. Wh which one was it? Uh. Wait, what did he say? File a complaint? It's not in here. I thought it said database entry. Hmm, yeah, no. Must have seen it wrong. You need me for something on you? What? Oh. <laughs> That's a weird dude. Okay. It was on the last page. Oh. Wait, what? Oh, was it false accusation? 
Oh, it was false. Oh, okay. It's used in the same ways when people charge someone on a false, false allegation. If someone knowingly uses a false... Oh, Big Boss wants to go. One sec. Apparently me mimicking the guy is a Mickey Mouse voice, according to Pike. <laughs> okay. Um, if someone knowingly uses a false accusation to try to charge someone else with a crime, he or she can be accused of making a false accusation. There's a little... There should probably be like a forward slash. This is determined in the Penal Code, Article 172, and a sentence can be between three months to ten years. That's it. Okay. So then what happened? The little bastard actually filed a report against me. Of course, it didn't stick, but ever since then he's been a nuisance to the police. I wondered if Kazumori's nice gesture of tapping in on the shoulder really turned out to be trouble for the police. At least this proved, proved his extreme paranoia. When the people at HQ didn't take him seriously, he hired his family's lawyer to go after the police. What an idiot. Why charge the entire police force? And then... Kazumori, hold it right there. Just to clarify, this really happened, right? Of course it did. Do you really think I could make this up? I was just checking, because it all seems a little insane. I know how you feel, I'm the same. It's just gross. These internet addicts can't seem to bridge the gap between the digital world and the real world. Feels like he's acting like a pubescent child. He sounds like a little brat just trying to show off the vast knowledge he gained from the internet. I think he was acting up because his pride got hurt, so he snaps at you but then doesn't know how to win the argument and it'll just go on and on. Dealing with these kinds of people is easy, you just have to let them know who's boss. And if you can get away with it, just continue doing that until they are at a loss for words. But in this scenario, he wouldn't have gotten away with anything. I think I'd better come up with another solution to stop his quibbling. Kanaya Hiromo doesn't sound like the type of person who would be willing to cooperate anyway. How should we approach this? I say we fight. We gotta take him head on and tell him we caught him smiling at all the crime scenes. Alright. That sounds like a risky strategy. Oh yeah, remember not to use the word stupid in front of him, okay? It would just get him all fired up. Understood. I'll be careful. Because I'm worried about what you just said earlier. He clearly doesn't know what a false accusation is. What, really? Oh, the music stops. We parked a car outside of Kaneya's house and checked the perimeter. Oh my god, these sounds. It's summer again. Seeing as the family has owned this land since the old days, it's a pretty big mansion. There were also other smaller residences around the mansion. I hope he's here. He's an internet addict without a job. He'll be here. Let's go. Yeah, it's true. I'm kind of the same, although I do have a job, but it's also with the internet. When we rang the doorbell at the front porch, an old woman who seemed like Kanea's grandmother opened up, probably. As soon as we explained why we were here, she pointed to a place over to the side. She said he just recently moved there. So Japanese! All these sounds! Oh my god! We headed over to the house, other house and rang the doorbell, but there was no response. We rang it a couple more times, but still nothing. No one's home. He's home. I can already smell the trouble this guy is. I know what to do. This is really funny. I like this. Kanaya! Kanaya Hiroma! Delivery service! We have a package for you! Delivery? <laughs> He'll mistake us for some delivery guys bringing him his anime DVDs or video games. <laughs> you couldn't possibly... <laughs> no way! <laughs> Cause when he shoots me, you look saying, I told you so. 
Kanya opened the door slowly and was astonished. You aren't delivery guys. Sorry about that, but we needed to have a talk with you. About what? Who are you guys? Did my father send you again? Tell him I'm trying to find a job and he should stop bothering he should stop bothering me. He thought his father father hired us to come have a talk with him. Luckily for us, he didn't remember Kazumori. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not it. We're keeping in rhythm with Kazumori. We both reached for our police ID badges at the same time. Lamesia, thank you. Police? You probably already know about the series of murders that have been happening here recently. We'd like to ask you some questions. Uh, I'm a little busy at the moment. I promise it won't take long. Just think of it as helping solve a case. From the looks of Kaneya, he looked a little bothered and wanted to refuse. What, the police have run out of the clues? Are you so desperate that you're going by houses and poking around? Yeah, you could say that. We're looking for new leads. I see. I didn't expect the police to be this incompetent. On the specials I see sometimes on TV you are always something. So that's just a fabrication of the government and the TV? I was about to interject but Kazumori tapped me on the shoulder and I stopped myself. I wouldn't know about that. So can we ask you some questions? What's in it for me? What? Yeah, this dude's a fucking asshole. I want something in return. You don't think I'll give you valuable information for free, do you? You must really be desperate to come to me. In that case, I could be your special informant. I can find all sorts of information online. I happen to be a great hacker. I can get you anything you need to know, so how much are you willing to pay me? I can't believe he's trying to take advantage of our weakness and asking for money. I want to give him a good scalding for even suggesting it, but I'm somehow able to suppress it. Come on, you want my help, right? You gotta give me something. I'm not a charity. Fuck this dude. I clenched my fist. I did it too! Unconsciously. <laughs> Kit really deserves a beating for his root behavior. Cause somebody was right about this one. What are you doing? What are those fists for? Are you mad? This isn't what it looks like. Um, Kazumori? Yes? What are you doing? Oh, what a wonderful picture. Now I got some evidence. If you do something stupid, I think I'll upload this to my blog. This is where I lost my temper. I couldn't let the bastard go on. We're not getting any closer to our goal as long as we don't get him under our thumbs. He's only trying to offend us by his quibbling. By quibbling. Sorry, Kazumori, but I think we should get straight to the point. Well, alright. Proceed. Thanks. Alrighty. I quickly grabbed him by the collar. Ugh. Huh, what are you doing? You think you could just assault us like that? <laughs> I'll expose you for what you really are. I'm gonna write about being oppressed by the authorities. Yeah, here we go. Oh fuck, I need to focus. Uh, there. Give it a shot. Let's see if you can still manage to use your keyboard after this. <laughs> Break your fingers, little fuck. Oh, it's not on auto anymore. I guess that's good. Not the face, GG. Go for the torso. <laughs> so good. Like, I don't know. But I won't give in. It's useless to use violence against me. I'll never submit. His obscure attitude that seemed to be heavily influenced from manga and anime, which only made me more angry. This, this doesn't add up, this sentence. His obscure attitude that seemed to be heavily influenced from manga and anime only made me more angry. That witch should just be gone. Wait, I never said I wouldn't talk. Looks like it worked, and his attitude shifted a little in my favor. Yeah, nice. Getting sick of your nonsense. If you keep going on like this, I know just what to do. Are you threatening me? Sorry, but I just, I just recorded you. Guilty as charged. Hmm, that isn't evidence. I think you're underestimating the police as an organization, am I right? If you really go through with this, we'll take you head on and testify against the credibility of your evidence. I will, Waffle. I can do it. Ha, <laughs> what are you talking about? I recorded it! I recorded it! Isn't it the end of the story? We can do anything if we get serious. Gulp. Must have taken him by surprise. 
but I didn't have time to go along with his nonsense any longer. I had to find out why he was at all the crime scenes. His testimony might be the key to solving the case, so we can't keep taking the safe approach. I wonder why the fuck they decided that the liar art music should only be like fucking... What is it? One minute? Two minutes? Two minutes, probably. Like, just make it like an endless loop until the liar's art ends. Ah, oh, it didn't move. All right, Kanaya. I'll give you a choice. Do you want to talk here or back at the station? Wait, who said I was gonna cooperate? You have no choice. Let's go. I'll go get a warrant. Sorry it had to come to this. We just wanted to have a little chat. Now we have no choice, so I think we'll go get a warrant and come back for you. A warrant? Are you saying you're going to arrest me? You can't do that! At the moment, it's true that we can't force him to do anything right now, by law. But he started acting really anxious when he brought up a warrant. I think the guy definitely knows something. Why are you being so stubborn? Is there something in your house that you don't want us to see? I won't let you guys come close to my collection of figurines and let you put your filthy hands all over them. <laughs> ah, fuck. Come on now, detective. What did I do? I, have nothing I haven't done anything wrong. Mm. Yeah. Did you just refuse? That's fine by us. You'll soon become very famous in this small little town. Are you threatening me? Like I said before, I'm recording everything that you're saying. Are you positive you're recording everything? I stared into his eyes as I said that. His eyes started to shift around quickly as if he was nervous about something. Don't you mess with me! The kind of intimidation won't work on me! Unfortunately, my strategy seemed to have backfired. Oh, fuck. Ah, no! Ah, that's enough. We'll come back later. Sorry to have disturbed you. Huh? Well, alright. Oh, god. Uh, I'll be watching you! Did you expect us to give up so easily? You shouldn't underestimate the authorities. We'll always get- we always get what we're after. Someone will be watching your every move from now on. Hey, come on! Wait, I was just joking. We don't- you don't have to take everything so seriously. Well, if you'll excuse us, we'll just wait for you to screw up. Turned my back to him and started walking away. Hey, wait! Kaneya comes after us, calling us. I think I might have something to tell you, but I'm not too sure if it'll be useful to you guys. Finally, he's offering something possibly useful. I wonder if I should seize the opportunity. No, he'll just mock and jeer us if we turn around now. I'll have to wait for the perfect moment to strike back. Hey, Emski! Nice! No, that'll be all for today. Let's move out. Hold on a minute! Fuck. What do I do now? Mm, see you next time! Too late. We're done talking here. See you next time! We'll be back next time with some hard evidence. Those next times are a little bit double. Maybe I should change the second one. We'll be back soon with some hard evidence. Probably better. You don't have to be so hasty. I was just joking around. Don't you guys have a sense of humor? You guys should start acting like adults. I think you should follow your own advice. Bye for now. Ah, wait. Why are you being so cold all of a sudden? I had definitely gained control of the situation. Yes! But there's still no guarantee he will cooperate with us, though. I think I better keep my guard up. Yee! I'm in the blue! It doesn't matter anymore. Sorry for the intrusion. We'll see you again soon. Alright, I guess you'll leave me no choice. Consider this a special gift. What's so special about it? We came here to ask you some questions. It was just standard protocol. I have no need for anything special. We can leave. Ah! Ah! Really? Okay, I surrender. Just go easy on me. I won. Finally defeated this snot-nosed Brett. I was so proud of myself. As I gleamed with triumph, I caught a glance of Cousin Wario who had lost his previous engagement with the kid. It seemed like he was a bit frustrated. <laughs> yes! That was perfect. Get fucked, yeah. <laughs> totally cakes. So, what was the thing you wanted to ask me? Like I said, how about the murders that have been happening lately in this village? Oh right, I remember. I don't actually know very much about them. Why were you at every crime scene? Kanya flinched. I pretended not to notice, but I kept watching his every move. 
He might not have expected this question, but he started answering differently than before. Can you answer, please? Why were you present at all the crime scenes? I... I... I want to become a famous novelist. I haven't told anyone about this yet. I was preparing to write a romantic novel. A novel? That was unexpected. That's why I visited all the crime scenes. I was doing some research on crime scenes for my book. You didn't actually think I was involved with the case, did you? That's ridiculous. Give me a break. I think the police should be doing a better job and actually try to catch the murderer instead of wasting your time with me. People in town must be getting sick of your failures too. Ah, there's a quotation mark missing there. Beginning. Haruka feels the same way, or is it maybe maybe it was a continuation of the previous screen. I'm not sure. Haruka feels the same way. I'll be watching your every move and on trying to solve this case. Haruka? Are you referring to Minase and Haruka? You two know each other? That was unexpected. I never expected such a cute girl to be involved with someone like him, and I didn't even realize they were on a first name basis. Yeah, Haruka and I are pretty close, but that's not a your concern. I'm sorry, I was just out of pure curio it was just out of pure cur curiosity. It's a hard word. I really don't want people to know about our relationship. Don't tell anyone, okay? I don't want her to know that I'm trying to become a novelist. He was really starting to sweat as he was talking about this. Maybe it was because it was the middle of summer, or maybe just because he was fat. <laughs> so rude. <laughs> but <laughs> it's what the Japanese said. Somehow his expression bet is betraying him. Are you alright? You're really sweaty. Oh, I'm fine. I usually sweat a lot like this. It's time for my medication. Medication? Are you sick? Yeah, it's called eating too much. Is it for being overweight? Do you have diabetes? He doesn't even look that fat, though. No, uh, it doesn't matter. It's not your business. I guess not. I think I've said enough. Go away. But we still have some more... Told you everything I know. There's nothing more I have left to say. I think we're done here. Kanya, wait! Bam. Chat makes this look like a sub-only stream. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I don't see anyone who isn't sub at the, sub at the, subbed at the moment. His attitude changed abruptly and he slammed the door. We were left standing on the porch in front of a locked door. Hey, he closed the door on us. I guess so. Who the hell does he think he is? I don't know how I feel about this. There's another error, spelling error. Or typo, I guess. There's definitely something fishy about this guy. I don't think he's telling us everything. Yeah, I feel the same way. I can only think the scum's desperately trying to keep us to keep up appearances. We got hustled so thankfully yesterday. Yeah, it's true. At least we got something out of him. We can't get a search warrant without any proof. And if he's guilty of something, I'm sure he's hiding some kind of If he's guilty of something, I'm sure he's hiding some kind of evidence. Yeah, well, from now on I think we should keep an eye on him. Yee, that was another section. On the e evening of that same day, we started our surveillance surveillance, yeah, of Kanaya. Surveillance. We had just one goal. We wanted to know everything about him and expose any suspicious behavior. What is it again in Dutch? Waffle, can you help me out? Ed! Ah, thank you for gifting to couch! What's the surveil surveillance in uh, in Dutch? Oh my god, Ed! <laughs> Thank you for giving to Martin. Gifting to Martin. Surveillance in Dutch. Oh yeah, Pika, you can tell me too. Oh my god, Ed! <laughs> FDY, welcome back! You're a sub again. <laughs> oh my god, Ed. You're at 30 subs. <laughs> That's so many. 31! <laughs> Thank you so much, Ed. We're, we're way too high. We're at 537 subscribers. I think we're close to like 100 gifted subs or something. Yeah, must be. It's crazy. Sassy, welcome back. 
De waffel move on. Or Pika, do you know? Toezicht, maybe? Ah, uh, yeah. Onder toezicht houden. Ja, ja, ja. Ja, that's probably it. Oké. Okay. We had just one goal. We wanted to know everything about him and expose any suspicious behavior. To get there, we have to endure. Strengthen my resolve and hit my presence in the car. We'll keep at it, no matter if it'll take hours or even days. I focus my gaze on Kanaya's house. My neck was covered with sweat in no time. Just another typical surveillance during the heat of summer. God, that would be horrible. Like, Japan in summer is so hot and humid and it's fucking horrible. If you then have to be in a car, even if it's nighttime, if you have to be in a car that doesn't have the AC running... <sighs> We couldn't keep the AC going because we had to keep the engine off while we were parked. We'd risk getting noticed by our target if we leave the engine running in a parked car. Plus, the higher ups wanted us to cut back on gas usage. If we don't follow the order, it could have a, a large impact on our case budget. So Japanese. Seemed like he never left his house. We stayed in the same spot for days. I periodically called back to the office to see if there were any updates on the case. But all we've, all we've heard so far is Kuro's meaningless reply saying there's no new development. I just stayed inside the car with my eyes fixed on his house, believing in my intuition. Here, I got you some cold juice. You want some sandwiches too? Just juice is fine, thanks. You don't like hot sandwiches? What a waste. You're really missing out. Aren't they your favorite? I would feel bad eating one of them. What's that supposed to mean? That shouldn't bother you. If my cute junior colleague wants it, I'll give her as many as... It's really okay, you can stop. I wouldn't want to get in the way of you and your beloved sandwiches. Okay, so you can be thoughtful after all. You've finally been finding your place at work lately, too. All I did was turn down a sandwich. Couldn't believe he was complimenting me for that. <laughs> I really wanted to tell him he needed to stop going out every 30 minutes to stretch his legs. Seems like he never leaves the house. Nope, the looks match the personality. He really is an indoor person. He doesn't show himself at all. Do I look like an indoor person? I guess I do. Because I always wear sweatpants. Mm. At least I'm cute. <laughs> Any visitors? Nothing. I see the family leave the main house every now and then. They sure are quiet. Hey, this is just a suggestion, but... Stop right there. I already got a bad feeling about this. I knew what he was trying to say. What if we were wrong about this guy? We've been surveilling him for a couple days now and nothing's really happened. I was starting to think that we had a, we had made a terrible mistake. Fuck the outdoors. <laughs> Pale and comfy. <laughs> Sekimoto is still hanging out in a cell doing nothing. Might get a scolding from the guys in the first investigation division for that. I think at some point I was like, first investigation division is too long and I, f I switched it to the first division. Because it was so obvious it was like the same thing every time. I think I maybe should go back and switch, change that up way sooner in the game because it's so like lengthy. It's really like, it doesn't read nicely. Yeah, but still, there's something strange about this guy. Is that your cop's instinct? Yeah, it could be, but it's more rational than that. Don't you agree that there's something just not right about him? He's a hikikomori? Uh, yeah, he kind of is, yeah. Kazumori might be getting fed up with my tenacity. Ten tenacity? Tenacity? But I had to say something in order to stay awake. Alright, the night's still young. Tell me why you think this guy's a little off. Kanaya Hiromu was there at every crime scene. But he hasn't left his house for the past several days. Isn't that strange to you? Yeah, it is. Well, keep an eye out for me. I'm gonna get some shut-eye. We'll switch after an hour, okay? No way! Last time you said that, you didn't wake up until the next morning! Come on, we gotta take this seriously. Even if you tell me that, I'm really bad at staying awake at night. Where did that enthusiasm go when you showed Kuruda that you showed Kuruda? Well, I didn't expect it to drag out for this long. Kazumori is showing his bad habit again. He can only be enthusiastic about something in the very beginning. If it ends up taking a while, he'll try to ditch it as soon as possible. Please, let me get some rest. I promise you I'll buy sandwiches tomorrow. You should let me get some sleep first. Me, you should let me get some sleep first. I've been at it for a couple of days in a row and I'm not feeling well. And thank you for the bits! 
Spit boss is never going to die. He said those last thousand though, so like two more resubs or a thousand forty-five bits. We're almost there. Um, it's feeling well. Huh? What did you just say? Do you have no shame? Why should you be the first to rest? Aren't you being a little hypocritical? Hip hypo? Hippo? Hypocritical right now? Ah, oh, I got it. Rock, paper, scissors. Let's do it. That'll be fair, right? Enough. Ooh. Ah! Our conversation was interrupted by the sound of glass shattering followed by a scream. Here it comes. <laughs> this bit's really cool. What the hell was that? He glanced over at me, but I had no idea what was going on. Definitely the scream of a man. He sounded extremely upset. I think he came from Kaneya's house. We both concentrated on the noise. I said, knock that off! That's Kaneya's voice. Let's get a closer look. Khan, hey! Long time no see! How you been? We, kick, we quickly get out of the car. Once out of the car, we quietly make our way to Kanaya's house. The neighbors clearly heard all the commotion because every every once in a while we could see I could see a person's shadow looking out of their window. I'm trying my best, but it takes time. You're treating me like I'm worthless. We actually listen to Kanaya's screams of rage. The police just happened to come by. I didn't do anything. He was quite upset. What should we do, Gigi? Should we call for backup? Or should we just handle the situation by ourselves? Cousin Woody gave me a serious look. Even if we decided to enter the house, I don't think we would be able to subdue him. It would be safer to wait for backup. Muddy, thank you! Shut up! I can do it if I try! Stop making me repeat myself over and over! But if we call for backup, this case will be handed over to another division. All of our hard work will be for nothing. GG, what are we gonna do? Sloth! Yeah! New bit boss! Thank you! Thank you, Sloth. So that's why I needed the money, you old hag. You just need to shut up and listen to what I have to say. Kanye's rage caused us both to flinch. Caused us to both flinch. Yeah, okay. I had to make a choice. Do it alone, call for backup, wait and see. Let's go. We better do this on our own. Are you serious? Wouldn't it be better to call for backup? There's no time. We had to act fast so nobody would get hurt. I glared fiercely at the hesitating Kazamori. Let's go! I kicked the door open with all my might. It's a sliding door though. Wait. I should change that. I changed it. I, I translated it to I kicked the door open, but it's a sound of a sliding door. So we should probably do something like I slipped the door open as fast as I could or something. Cousin Woody ran inside, jumping into action. Kanaya, what the hell are you doing? Calm down! Ha! Huh, what is this? You worthless hag! You called the cops! Cousin Woody! Gigi, stay back! Go block the entrance! But can you handle it alone? Shut up! Just do it! Couldn't see what was going on from where I was standing. The only thing I could hear were the sounds of people fighting. I readied my baton. <laughs> Just in case. It bothers me that I said baton twice and then nightstick once. It probably should just be nightstick all the way or baton all the way. Ba baton, I can't say it normally anymore. Which one do you guys prefer? I translated this. Yeah, this is mine! So that's why I'm like making notes or Vaknari is making notes for me. Um, so I can give feedback to the devs or change the files, the source files, and then send it to the devs. Baton! <laughs> okay. So then one more note, Vaknari, if you please that that one instance of nightstick should be changed to baton. We don't use nightstick here. Ah. Okay. It's going so fast. Yeah, I'm sorry, Vaknari. You should just leave the modding to Andy. Just focus on uh, just the notes. 
You don't have to focus on, on chat commands. Uh, what the hell are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> I can do anything. Do you hear me? What's going on, Kanaya? What the hell is happening? <laughs> I'm not retarded. I'm a gifted man. You will all see what I'm talking about. <laughs> He's so crazy. The room was filled with stuffy air. The heavy humidity irritated my nose. I can, I know that feel. What's the smell? I don't feel so well. The air was a mixture of fish, fishy, musty, and other put putrid smells. Kanaya! <laughs> Here he comes! GG, he's heading your way! Roar! Yeah! <laughs> Kanaya came flying at me at the same time I heard Cousin Woody's warning. I couldn't believe my eyes. Is that you, Kanaya? Pet. I couldn't see him clearly because the light was so dim, but he look didn't look like the person I just saw a, a few days ago. Is there a cat under the desk or something creepy? There's no cat. What the fuck was touching my legs then? Felt like a cat. He panting. He was breathing like a vulgar, ferocious animal. The smell coming from his breath was intense. It was like he was rotten from the inside. Who the hell are you? Why are you in my house? Don't you recognize me? It was clear that he was out of his mind. I couldn't tell his physical condition, but his eyes were glowing like a hungry beast. He looked like a beast with, ravenous hu with a ravenous hunger. I almost confused him for a grizzly bear for his appearance. From his appearance. Shit, you're just brute strength. Can I give it up? Give it up? Give up on what? He mumbled as if he didn't understand. It was clear that he wasn't thinking straight. Oh, I get it now. It was you. What are you talking about? We won't hurt you, so calm down. I won't. I won't what? What are you trying to say? I won't let it go. I will never! No one's going to take anything from you. Just calm down. Haruka, you're mine! Haruka! Kaneya, calm the hell down! Cousin Mori's yelling was so loud that it overwhelmed Kaneya, causing him to stop screaming. Instead, he started walking. He walked slowly, step by step. He moves forward slowly towards me. His body was slowly revealed by the moonlight. He was in nothing but his underwear. Why is he naked? Don't move another step. Ah, ah. I had no idea what he was saying. I chose to... Look at Kazumori. I looked over at Kazumori. After seeing me panic, my partner jumped towards him. Kaneya! <laughs> Ka! It's music. Before Kazumori could get to him, Kaneya quickly shoved me out of the way and escaped. This one I could finally get a good look at him, and I, I was at a loss for word. For words. Oh! Oh my god! He was only wearing a pair of white underwear, and his entire body was covered with blood. The blood looked dark, like it had already dried. He didn't run like any ordinary person. His arms were flailing, and his torso swayed from left to right. He's running like Ace Ventura. <laughs> when he gets like shot with like the poison darts, or the paralytic darts, or whatever it is, you know, in, in Ace Ventura 2. <laughs> when he's running through the forest, like... <laughs> I always have to think of that. Um, I could barely swallow. Is he the blind man? He escaped into the trees outside the mansion. We were about to lose him in the darkness. Don't just stand there, Gigi! Go after him! Okay! Hi! We both ran after him as fast as we could, but we quickly lost track of him in the darkness. Still, every now and then we saw him or heard him moan. There was enough for us to be able to follow him, but not enough to capture him. Before we knew it, we found ourselves in the middle of the forest. 
He's like a titan. Yeah, kinda. <laughs> oh god. Naked, creepy guy. Group 1's currently searching on the northern side of the mountain, but no sign of him. This is group 2. Same here. No sign. We'll continue, continue our search. This is group 3. No clues. Normally this mountain road would be deserted at night, but now it was crawling with police officers. Others were investigating the scene over at Kaneo's house. There were multiple bodies inside the house. It'll be no surprise who the bodies are. Misuzu is doing her best at the crime scene right now. I was staying at a makeshift base with Kazamori. While the search teams are out, we've been explaining the situation to the first division. Ah, there's the switch. This is apparently the point where I was like, first investigation division is too long. Let's just say first division. Everyone will understand. I, I should probably do that sooner. It just reads, reads way nicer. Just first division. Kurara came to see us when we were finished. Great job. Your instincts were correct. You guys did a great job. Those first division guys didn't thank us and even had the nerve to tell us to stay out of their way. If they were so good at their jobs, they should have found them already. We could have caught him if they were were any bit smarter. Kazumori spoke up as if he wanted the guys around him to hear him. Kurada, who was surrounded by his superiors, could only muster up a bitter smile. Something like no sight of the suspect. Um, yeah, it's more like we haven't seen anything. Yeah, no clues. They haven't found any tracks or anything. Yeah, no sight of the suspect could work too. Come on now, you don't have to get angry. We need all the help we can get scouring the mountain. Keep your cool, okay? I know the situation. Alright, I'll stop my complaining. Can you tell me what happened in the room? Brief, ex brief explanation would be fine. Yeah, I wanted to hear about it too. Maybe that should be present time. I want to hear about it too, because we haven't heard about it yet. It was hell on earth, full of rotten corpses and the smell of death and decay. Victims were definitely his family members. Looks like an act of madness. Wasn't he yelling at someone be just before he went in? You mean someone could have still been alive? All of the bodies were already badly decomposed. You saw him yourself, Gigi. Did he look after you? Didn't he look after you? Kaneya certainly didn't look normal. So what happened then? He was yelling at the dead bodies. He must have believed that one of the maggot-filled bodies was still nagging at him. At him is probably better, right? Or nagging him. Guess both works. He's probably just hallucinating. So that means that Kanye had lost his mind even before he got there. Well, what a tragedy. He's a dangerous one. There will be more victims if we don't catch him. Right. Oh, and here's the first investigation. Well, I guess it can be the full thing here, because this time it's Kurada, and Kurada is, is their manager, so he's a little bit more official. I guess that's probably why I left it, like, full. He'll be found in no time. Damn it. It'll be taken out of our hands again. Our objective is still to solve this case. That should be enough for all of us. Gigi, you're talking like a Buddhist saint. Huh? Me? Of course I know he's not using those words to praise me. I didn't know how to respond to his words for a bit. Nagging him is okay? Okay. Well, I... You're the one that got us here, Gigi. It's true. People around us stopped talking and turned their heads towards us. The case was already at the dead end, and the special law enforcement unit hasn't even been mentioned at any of the strategy meetings. All they wanted us to do was babysit the murder in lockup. I kind of want to... That last mention of special law enforcement unit, I kind of want to change that just to our division. Our department. It's probably just smoother. All they wanted us to do is babysit the murder in lockup, but we managed to do them one better by finding more evidence for the investigation. Ah, witch! Thank you so much for the sub! Thank you! Welcome! In the meantime, Gigi, you found Takenaka and now revealed the truth about Kanaya. We are far from worthless. We are in no position to be excluded from this investigation. Where is your pride as a detective, Gigi Gap? Tears were welling up under his eyes. Oh, my baby! I could feel his rage. I never expected those kind of, kind of words from such a guy. 
Gigi, think about it. Is this fair? Answer me. I understand how you feel, Kazumori. Calm down. Shut up, you opportunist. <laughs> Talking to Gigi. Opportunist? <laughs> Kazumori's words stabbed my heart and something within me boiled like a lava. Like lava. That's not a lava. I probably changed it and then forgot the, to remove the A. This isn't fair. Can't hear you. Of course this isn't fair. I'm the one who uncovered it. Why should I be treated like this? I spew out everything I wanted to say, motivated, motivated by Kazamori. It's simple then. Kuroda will be back soon. Please, if you do this, it's going to put me in hot water with the higher-ups. But this is about equal opportunity. Let's go, Gigi. All right. Oh, Kazumori, if only you stayed put. Let's go solve this case together. Are you guys sure about this? It's not too late to change your mind. He truly was an opportunist who didn't understand our enthusiasm at all. Relax. The main objective is the special law enforcement unit is... The main objective of the special law enforcement unit is to support all the other divisions. <clears throat> the more people in the search party, the better. We're going in as a part of the support staff. Go talk to the first investigation division about this. You should go and at least try to support your team. But it won't be use helpful if you act on your own. Guess who in the, sh guess who in the search party initially contacted Kanaya Hiroma? We might be the only ones who know what he might be thinking right now. If I was in Kanaya's shoes, where would I go? If we continue our search with that in mind, we have to come across him at some point. We ignored Kuroda's protests and headed for the mountain. Get fucked, boss. <laughs> hey, Gigi. Oh, this bit. This hurts my heart. Cousin Woody started to speak to me while we were walking up the slope of the mountain. Unlike before, he spoke with a calm voice. What? I'm sorry I yelled at you. An apology? Now that's something I wasn't expecting. It's just that, now that I've called down and I'm thinking about it, I think I dragged you into a mess. Into, into this mess. It's fine, you were just saying what I wanted to say. You've motiva motivated me, and I appreciate it. <laughs> What's that all about? This is awkward. <laughs> oh, it's so cute! Ah! These guys! This is a little awkward now. Just remember that I'll be judging you as soon as you... Oh, what's with that double quotation mark there? I'll be judging you just as you are judging me. What's that supposed to mean? You're a hundred years too early to look down on me. Hey, can I ask you something? Where did you learn to do all that? What do you mean? It's pretty impressive how you were able to pick out Kanaya from Misuzu's pictures. Oh, that. I think I just got lucky, I guess? And just now, you saw something in Kanaya. Normally I don't think anyone would have thought anything about him. If you think you can't do something, then you're just denying yourself opportunities. Ugh! That's such a good sentence. It's like a quote to live by. How positive. No, that's not what I mean. I'm scared. Scared of becoming useless. I guess I'm like Kanaya in that respect. I remembered what Kanaya said at his house a few days ago. You're treating me like I'm worthless. This was proof that he had an inferiority complex. No one likes to be rejected. What a dreadful thought to feel like you're a complete waste of life. <laughs> you're weird. Don't laugh at me. Saying that you're like Kanaya would mean that you completely understand the psychology of a killer. First face here we come. If only sloth. I felt quiet without realizing. I wasn't prepared for that blow. My stomach shrinks. Why'd you go quiet? Sorry, but those are some pretty harsh words for a compliment. <laughs> I said don't laugh at me. Oh, my bad. You just sounded cute as you said harsh. Oh. But that isn't... <laughs> don't laugh. Come on, take it seriously. We need to focus, please. They're so cute! Kill is out there somewhere. He could he could attack at any moment. Yes, he could. Tan tan tan. Okay, alright. So what now? What do you think he's doing? I'm just hypothesizing here, but if he's hiding in these woods, him being scared might make him attack someone. Attack? What makes you say that? He can't run forever. He'll have to shake us off if he wants to get away. The quickest way for him would be to kill his pursuers. 
But most of the police are here, searching the area. You can't possibly kill all of us. For a normal person, that would be true, but Kaneo's state is far from that. Besides, he's already killed his family. I don't think he'll hesitate to kill again. You could put special law... division? Uh, enforce enforcement unit as a highlighted explanation? I don't know if I could. But yeah, I could definitely come up with something. Um, which one is it? Human wave tactics. I had to research this one. I didn't know that was a thing. The human wave attack, or Jinkai... Jinkai Senjutsu in Japan is a tactic predominantly used in the army to obtain victory. They also use this term every now and then when they employ many people to perform a certain task. They say the term originates in China and is an abbreviation of Mao Zedong saying we'll bury the enemy troops in a sea of our people, but it has never been confirmed. Oh, that comma and that quotation mark should be the other way. It should be comma, quotation mark, but it has never been confirmed. When I read that, I was like, oh, didn't know that was a thing. Okay, I should save. Okay. I could hear him gulp. He probably thought we were at an advantage because we outnumbered him, but now he realized it's not that simple. He's hiding in this darkness, no matter how many people we have. As long as he can stay hidden, it won't be a problem. Exactly. If he starts attacking the flanks with the fewest number of officers, he might get a chance to escape. And he must know all kinds of stuff from what he learned online. He even said that you can find all fi you, f you can find all kinds of information online. We can only hope that in his crazed state he doesn't remember any of it. GG, I think you should be getting back. Where did this come from all of a sudden? His heart watching out for you while we search for him. No, don't be foolish. I'm not gonna slow you down. It's not gonna work. Can't protect you and find him at the same time. Women should just do as they're told. What if you get injured and get an ugly scar? No one would ever want to marry you. So Japanese. Are you worried about me? Ah, not at all. All I'm saying is because you'll be in a vulnerable position if he attacks us. Right, all I'm saying is because you'll be in a... I think we should just lose because there. All I'm saying is you'll be in a vulnerable position if he attacks us. Yeah, I think we should lose the because there. He is worrying about me. I could sense it hiding behind what he was saying. Follow my orders. Go back and send Kurada here instead. He'll be fine on his own. He's too old for this. He'll definitely be a burden. Besides, I've seen the crime scene. Shh. Fuck. I really... Maybe we should just stop playing here. Now that the vibes are good. <laughs> oh, this part sucks. He stopped suddenly. We definitely heard something just now. Kazumori gestured me to stay low as I, and I crouched. I looked around trying to find out where the sound came from. Fuck. Ah, fuck was it again. There's only one answer right now where you don't die. <laughs> Is Kanaya hiding nearby? My heart started to beat so hard that I was afraid he would hear it. But it wouldn't do us any good to be quiet now. I should have discussed with Kazumori that Kaneya might find us first. I think I should cover my mouth. I covered my mouth, trying not to make a sound. Every muscle in my body tensed up. I inhaled and exhaled slowly, trying to relieve myself of the extreme tension. Let's get a time machine, yeah. I slowly looked around. The only thing I could see was darkness. Whew, I think we're good, Gigi. Oh, I don't want to click on the next thing. Because we were just imagining things. All right. I exhaled deeply and stood up, faced forward to start walking again when... Fuck. Huh? My change in scenery caught me by surprise. It was a man in nothing but his underwear, covered in blood. Where did he come from? Kanaya? It was definitely him, but he had changed so much I could hardly believe my eyes. He started slowly walking towards us. I could see his body clearly under the moonlight. He looks so different that I can't really believe it's him. 
His body's proportions were way off. He had an enormous gut, just like a monster. Ah. I changed that. I really changed that. So that monster keyword should be Prida. That's how you pronounce it, right? Prida? Because I did my research. There, Prida. In Buddhism, to punish someone for the sins committed during his lifetime, the person is sent to the Buddhist hell of starvation and becomes a Prita, or Gaki, as it is known in Japan. They are often depicted with a swollen stomach, and everything they try to eat turns to ashes. They can never eat. Japanese characters for Gaki are starving and demon, meaning the hungry dead. Yeah, it should be Prita, not monster. I turn. I did monster- oh, and here it says fiend. Uh, fuck. Okay. So, we need to change the keyword, monster to Prita, and then we need to change the graphic, fiend, file number 001, fiend, to Prita as well. Okay. Some parts of his skin had turned purple. It's, it's as if it had started decaying. His hair was falling out too. He looked like a samurai that fled from battle after losing. Yeah, they actually, in old wartime Japan, um, whenever samurai or warriors would have lost a battle, they uh, would actually fled into the mountains and become like guerrilla warriors. A lot of times. There you are, you bastard. Ah, grrrr. You're coming with us! He can't even talk anymore. Kazumori grabbed him from behind and he resisted fiercely. Even though Kaneya looked like a walking corpse at this point, he surpri surprisingly managed to put up a real struggle. Let me teach you some manners. Hey, don't move! Grrr. Oh, look at that face! Kaneya's growl was no different from a wounded animal. The only thing left in him is that he is hurt and hates humans. Kanya, we're gonna arrest you and solve this murder case once and for all. We're gonna get medals for our achievements. Kazumori tried his best to take him down, but Kanya wriggled and resisted. Nearby officers who heard the shouts started to close in. It's all over now. Let's head back to the station and... I don't want to. I like Kazumori. <laughs> Fuck. Huh? Kazumori! What the... Kana... <sighs> Fuck. I hate this. I really hate this. Kaneya bit him. While Kaneya was being subdued, he was able to twist his neck and break free, and Kaneya took a chunk out of Kazumori's neck. Without letting go of Kazumori, he continues biting at him. Kazumori! I could only scream. Kaneo was staring right at me. The beast's eyes had me paralyzed and I just stood there, frozen in place. I have to do something. I have to save Kazumori. If I don't do something, he'll die. Still biting Kazumori, Kaneo now starts drinking the blood gushing out, from gushing out in big gulps with a look of ecstasy on his face. Burp. Ha! <sighs> The scene unfolding itself in front of me stops me dead in my tracks. I have to save him. I have to get Kazumori out of here. If I don't, I'll hate myself forever for this. We have a visual on the target! Engaging! Then the other officers finally arrived at the scene and subdued Kaneya. Overwhelmed by all the people, Kaneya was finally thrown to the ground. As they pulled Kazumori away from Kaneya, I ran over to him. Uh, Japanese police officers don't carry guns, no. Uh, normally they don't. They have, uh, uh baton, ha ha ha, and handcuffs. But it's not America. Kazumori, answer me! No! Dude. Chiji. His eyes were staring into nothingness. I tried to put pressure on the wound. Don't you die on me, Kazamori! You said we, were, we would solve this case together, didn't you? I couldn't stop crying. His body temperature was dropping rapidly, and the blood just kept gushing from his neck. His strength was slowly leaving his body. Other officers at the scene pushed me away and lift him up to get him to medical care. To get him to medical care, yeah. Don't die on me, please! We said we were gonna get... We are gonna get medals for our achievements. 
because the Muri was no longer responding to my words. I returned to the station with the first division. I went through the lobby and slowly headed for the basement. Everyone was startled by my appearance. <laughs> Rip. My favorite character. I reached the basement and opened the cell door to talk to Sekimoto. What's my time? An hour. Ooh, still have a long time to go. Footsteps. Hmm, must be GG. What is it now? Why are you up so early? I expected you to be asleep. They turned the lights off so early here, turned me into an early riser. And... His words were cut off. What's wrong? He stopped talking in the middle of a sentence. You seem different today. What happened? We arrested the blind man. He remained silent. This should have been good news for Sekimoto, yet he wasn't rejoicing. Why aren't you saying anything? You've blood on you. Are you hurt? When I heard that, I stared down at my bloody clothes. It's not impossible for people to think that I suffered some major injury, judging from the way I look. Don't worry, it's not my blood. I just wanted to share the news with you first. You're, you're really not a good liar. No one has ever told me that before. He's not a good judge of character. Sekimoto says nothing as he, as he stares at me. Don't just stand there all quiet. If you want to say something, say it. I don't think it's the closure we hoped for. For me, obviously, especially not for you. He read me like a book. No, it's obvious. You just have to look at my face to understand that I'm not happy with the outcome. Why the gloomy face? I think there's like a cat hair on my eyelash or something. I keep seeing a hair. He spoke softly, unlike his usual tone. He sounded like a tender priest. Which sounds kind of creepy to me, but maybe that's because I grow, grew up with Christianity. <laughs> I'd be more than happy to listen to you. You can share anything you want to with me. You can share anything you want with me. I think it's better without the two. Silence, but this time for me. He gently patted my back. Such a trivial gesture is almost enough for me to let, it, let all the dark emotions burst out. I take a couple of deep breaths to make sure I don't let my feelings run amok. I'm painfully aware of the fact that Sekimoto is letting me take my time. I take a moment to let myself calm down and then slowly start talking. Kazumori died during the arrest. Really? Unfortunately, it's the truth. He risked his life to arrest Blind Man. Is that so? I have no words I can say. I'm sorry. I'm sad that he died, really. Thank you for your condolences. We will press on with the investigation in honor of Kazumori. I'm grateful you were able to help us too. We owe it all to you. Thank you. I bowed to him. I was so tired that lifting my head back up was a challenge. Me. After a moment, I turned my exhausted body around and started walking away. Hold on, Gigi. Did the murderer actually say that he was blind man? Not yet, but considering the circumstances, I think there's little room for doubt. The clue was in the photos of each of the crime scenes. He was at every crime scene. I want to say he was at every one of them, because I already said crime scene. I thought something wasn't right about him when we questioned him, so we decided to keep an eye on him. Then later we walked in on him trashing his house and find out that he killed his family. He fled the scene, but we managed to arrest him. When we found the mentally deranged suspect, Kazumori tried to grab him and got bitten in his neck and passed away. Hmm, I see. He crossed his arms and seemed to be thinking about something. I wonder if he thinks something is out of place. First Division has taken over now and is working on interrogations. I'm sorry, but this will be the last time we'll meet. So he said within the evidence photos, who saw this suspect among onlookers at every crime scene, right? That's right. What about it? Misuzu, why are you here? Did you finish your research? What about work? 
I sneaked out. Sneaked out? What the hell are you doing? I almost yelled at her because she's usually always serious about her job. Forensics is still scrubbing the area. You still have lots of work to do. Every now and then, you truly are bad at reading people. It's simple. She's worried about you. Misuza nodded. You can't expect me to be able to focus on work when my friend from college is going through this. I gave Misuzu a startled look without even realize look without realizing. I can feel that she's angry, and I wonder if she'll say something to match that emotion. Sorry, thanks for coming. I don't need your thanks. Just admit just admit that you're having a rough time right now. You have to be honest with yourself. I almost started crying, but suppressed it immediately. I dropped my head to hide my expression, but a few tears still fell to the floor. To the floor. Always frustrates me, because it's like mistakes that now that I read it again, I can easily... I can spot them immediately, so you think like, Ah, why didn't I spot it before? But when, when, when it's such a big project and you're like so pressed in time to finish it, and it's just you and your friend to proofread it, it's just... it happens. Why are you fighting back tears? There's no need to. I quickly hold out my hand to cut Misuzu off. I'm okay. I'm okay. I rub my eyes at the back of my hands and I try to calm down. The sadness that had just flowed through me was replaced by a surprisingly calm feeling. And at the same time, the sad feeling of loss I was feeling for Kazumori was replaced with a burning anger. We were in the middle of a talk. Let's get back to it. Ah, yes. He said the suspect was present at the crime scenes. He was. We're not completely sure because the pictures weren't taken up close, but he seemed to be smiling while watching. A disgusting, filthy smile. And where is he now? If he was arrested, shouldn't, be, shouldn't he be in here too? That's a bit complicated. What do you mean? He's not ready to be... Moved here yet? He's been moved to an interrogation room because they don't want to let his, let this chance slip away. <laughs> That's getting bigger. <laughs> this one is pretty big, yeah. There's like a lot of empty space here. <laughs> this one just doesn't fit that well. <laughs> or maybe my head's getting smaller. Have you thought about that? <laughs> maybe my my skull is shrinking. Um, let's see. You can hear him across the entire first floor of the building, howling angrily. How is he doing now? He's still hallucinating and is suffering, suffering from extreme hunger. You can't have a conversation with him. All he says is nonsense. He says, I was just hungry. I need my medicine. I'll get fat again if I don't get my medicine. Misuza mimicked Kanaya's tone. The weirdness of what, he's, what she's saying doesn't match up with her cool way of speaking. That medicine is the best. You won't feel hungry when you take it. You can lose a lot of weight, no matter how much you eat. I have to lose weight so she'll love me. <coughs> ah. Okay, thanks, Sasari. Uh, but yeah, Bakhtari is taking notes of everything, so... Thanks. Uh, you're about to ask who she is, right? She's Minase Haruka, my precious Haruka. Minase Haruka? Did he say anything else about her? I don't know. This is just what I overheard while I was pretending to have something to do there. Misuza sighed. That's the latest so far. Is that good enough for you, Sekimoto? Hmm. He was deep in thought with his arms folded. He looks like he's not satisfied about something. Can you share what you're thinking? He remained silent for a while, ignoring my questions. This was obviously different from the previous times that when he remained don't really have to use when there. This was obviously different from the previous times he remained silent. I can see that his brain is working at high speeds right now. At this rate, the case against him might even get dropped because he's not of sound mind. We have to find as much evidence as we can before his lawyer gets involved. But it's the truth. He did kill those people. He can't get paroled that easily. Not even a human rights lawyer could... The lawyers have a beautiful network. If there's even the slightest trace of doubt, they'll use it. It's been in, I've been in touch with them before. They offered me a chance of, for parole, and they weren't even asking for any money. All they asked me to do was keep a diary on what it's like in prison. They sound like hyenas. 
Ah, uh, face. See you later. Of course, there are also honest lawyers, but I haven't been able to meet one yet, unfortunately. For them, getting people like Kaneya out again is easy. They'll get him into a mental hospital for treatment and will get compensation from the government. And the suspect is free until the court comes to a verdict. But he killed Kazumori! This is absurd! He must pay the price for what he's done! They should be investigating the suspect's house as we speak. The first team found drugs, and they're trying to retrace where he got it. Isuzu, would you excuse us for a moment, please? I guess, but why? I want to talk to him in private. Isuzu nodded and stepped out. Oh, that was you, Faith! Yeah, I retweeted it. I loved it. Thank you. After Misuzu left, it was really, really cute. I stayed silent for a moment. I slowly gathered my thoughts, trying to decide on what I should say first. Sekimoto patiently waited for me. You told me to be honest. Yes, I did. But I don't know whether or not I should. For a long time, I tended to let things get to me, and I'd end up saying too much. I see, many people suffer from that same problem. But I lost Kazamori because of it. No person is strong enough to handle every kind of situation. It can't be without fault. I, I got scared by the way he looked, and I couldn't move. If I had a bit more courage, Kazamori wouldn't have died. So what, you want me to tell you it's not your fault? Huh? You already know that there's no place for excuses, don't you? It's so harsh. <laughs> Sorry, but I'm gonna have to stop you right there. Kazumori is dead and you lived. That's a fact. You still have work to do. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> now get up. Shake it off and face reality. Show them what you're made of by solving this case. The fixes to the text term library going to be fixed in an update and that's when you're making notes. Yeah, yeah. So I, I have a direct line with the CEO that is in charge of this translation, or the game. They have the rights for the game. So I'm gonna just send them, when we finish the game, I'm gonna send them a file with all of my notes. I think, I think that's easier than me resending the file, um, because they already implement, implemented everything into the game. So it's probably easier if I tell them, like, these points should be changed. Um, and then... There'll probably just be an app update, and then it'll be fixed. They do it pretty fast, like, it'll be, like, two or three days after I've sent them, like, these points need to be fixed, they'll probably have it updated. Um, although the graphics might take a little bit longer, but I think they did that in-house, so should be fine. Um, this case isn't over yet. We might not even be close to the truth. It's not over? My eyes widen in spite of myself. Sakimoto looks serious. They weren't the eyes of a liar, but I did have my doubts about what he just said. Listen up. We haven't seen the full picture of this case yet. Locate what- locate that Minase Haruka that came up earlier. She'll definitely lead us to something. <laughs> or there will be another victim. How are you so sure? Where is your proof? You said that the suspect hasn't confessed to being the blind man yet, correct? Yes, that's correct. But it's pretty obvious. Obvious? Then did he cut out the eyes from his dead family members? Wait, uh, he could have forgotten because at the time he was completely out of his mind and was unstable. Listen to me. Blind man, I, this really annoyed me when I was translating this. He keeps saying, listen to me. Like he says it like five times. I was like, ah, bad writing. Ah. <laughs> um, blind man used to be a fictional character. There are only a couple people who actually know that. But still, there are murders happening in this village that mimic blind men. Because the killer knows about the origins of the blind man and his background. That's right. I first suspected my student Takenaka for that very reason. But that's a dead end because he has already been murdered by blind men. I don't know why blind man is killing people, and that makes me uneasy. Even when I was making the story, I left that part vague on purpose. But the suspect that was arrested for these late latest murders is showing us glimpses of his motive. He had issues with his family and financial problems, as you are already aware of. And to top it off, he's gone mad due to the drugs he was taking. Blind man doesn't have a reason for what he does. What he just said made sense. Kanaya was unemployed and definitely wasn't on good terms with his family. Hey, Gertie! Hello! 
Uh, let's see. Up until now, the motive behind the series of murders has been all but clear. Ah, GG, comma. There's a good chance that the person you put in custody knows something. It's strange how the murders and this bizarre, seemingly unrelated event happen side by side. But I think Blind Man is essentially different. He's right. If, this, if his reasoning is correct, there's still a lot about this case waiting to be uncovered. The girl you just mentioned. Minase Haruka. Yeah, her. I'll pay her another visit. Are you confident with what you just said? That's for you to decide. Isn't it your duty to gather as much information as you can for a case? Of course. I never imagined you'd give me any sort of advice. Consider it as a payment for allowing me to stay here. Alright, Gigi. It's time for you to go. You're the only one who can do this because you're one of the only ones in the SLU who thinks outside the box. None of the guys from HQ would ever think that an urban legend could be evidence for a case. But I'm absolutely positive that the murderer who knows every detail about Blind Man is still somewhere in Town C. He's probably out there just laughing at us. That's why you need to go out there and stop him. Okay. Don't let Cousin Woody's death be in vain. I liked him, even though he had a sharp tongue. If I could have, if I could, if I could, I would have liked hearing his, him bat batmouth people again. Sakimoto's word of condolence make me slight, smile bitterly. I still have unfinished business. Kazumori hasn't been avenged yet. For as long as I'm alive, I need to continue his will. Thank you for your cooperation. Please tell me everything you know. Minase Haruka. Dun dun dun! I'm sorry, but I have an appointment, so I don't have much time. Besides, I've already shared everything I know. I doubt I can be of any more help. So she is the one, beginning of the game, she showed us the bruise and she was like, Tamara is a bastard and he, uh, he hit me. And then we wanted to know where she was at the time that he died and then she got super angry and she left. And now she turns out to be connected in some way, we don't know how yet, to Kanaya, who was using drugs. And he said he is using drugs so that she'll love him again. That's what he's been saying. It was past 3.30 p.m. Minasea doesn't say it outright, but I can see that she's actually saying, get on with it. I really appreciate your co cooperation. I said it again and studied her eyes. I can see that she feels a bit intimidated. It wasn't clear, but I put another message in there without using words. Which was, are you sure you told me everything? She looked awfully suspicious when she refused to talk to me. I doubt she told me everything. I'm pretty sure she knows more than she's telling us. I know you don't have much time, so let's keep it short. If you answer all my questions, it'll be over in no time. I feel bad for her, but I'm not planning on taking the lenient approach this time, for Kazumori's sake, too. Kuroda sat beside me, watching my every action as if he understood how I felt. Um, could I do this on a later date? Why? I told you, I have an appointment. What's this? Here's my cell phone. Feel free to use it. Pardon? I don't understand. You can use my cell phone to let your appointment know that you might be late. And you can give the phone to me if the other end is giving you trouble. I can explain to them that you're assisting in a police investigation. Oh, snap! Mina say tightly pressed her lips together. Hmm. <laughs> It's clear that nobody likes being told what to do by the police. And besides, we'd find out the number we'd find out the number for where she is having her appointment anyway. If she if the person she's meeting is a shady character or if she's up to something fishy herself, she wouldn't be able to go along with this. But I can't. I hear I heard her saying that very softly. I pretend I didn't hear and put my cell phone away again. I could tell from her reaction that she was definitely hiding something. I love this part. You ain't going nowhere. Yeah, it's so good. I'm so sassy. <laughs> I see. Then if you cooperate with me, I'll make sure you get out of here as soon as possible. This is fun to translate because I love being like, you can, you can tell like certain parts. I had so much fun translating it. But I already told you everything I know about Tamura. It's not about Tamura. What? Then why am I back here? I don't understand. Didn't you hear about the incident that happened last night? Last night? 
I'm sorry, but the day I slept past noon. What happened? It's about Kanaya Hiromu. Something changed in her eyes. It didn't pass by me unnoticed. What did he do? Kanaya Hiromu killed his entire family and murdered a detective before, before being taken into custody. Is that true? I'll cut right to the chase. What is your relationship with him? I have nothing to do with him. But he mentioned your name once. We're obliged to verify this. Didn't you just hear me? I have nothing to do with him. She's completely refusing to make a statement. I make eye contact with Kuroda and he reacts with a small gesture. I understood his gesture as do as you wish. All right, I see. Really, I have nothing to do with him. I grab my phone again and handed it back over to her. <laughs> this is so sassy, I love this. Go ahead, you better cancel your appointment. What the heck? Oh, what the heck? I said, what the heck? What the heck are you talking about? I told you I don't know anything. Why are you treating me like an accomplice? This is insane, please believe me. These little things are really tricky. Because um, the keyword that you see, the green bits, they're actually not in the... Oh, mosquito. Get out of here. I don't want no mosquito bites. If you come back to me here, I'll smack you dead. Okay. The green keywords that you see in this file, like in the game, I couldn't see them. They were in a separate file in a different folder. So every time... Uh, I, when I was translating this, I actually was not looking at the keyword file. And I was just like, I think this will probably say this. So I think it has to be a uh or un. Um, and, uh, and then afterwards I checked, I went through all the keywords and I checked everything again. But yeah, that's, that's really tricky. Cause so, so the translation that I made is like, why are you treating me like un and then like HTML code. So I had to like work around it, placeholders and stuff. <coughs> Yes, I'm listening to you. That's why I want to hear from you more. But you said this would be over soon. See here, Minase. <laughs> I get right up in her face when I say this. I'm so sassy, I love it. We're not just here to mess around. One of my precious colleagues died while working on this case. Got it? I stare at her, scared by my eyes. She immediately looks away. I decided to give her an ultimatum to allow her to speak. Or would you prefer us to look into your entire personal life? It'll be a matter of time before you have to come back to talk to us. Is that really what you want? Oh, I'll tell you what I want, what I really, really want. Do you know what would happen if you did something like that? Are you threatening a detective? We can lock you up for that. This is insane. Say what you want. We won't back down until you tell us everything. I'll continue putting pressure on her until she understands that I'm not pulling back gonna ask you again, how do you know Kanaya Hiromu? Haruka remained silent for a while. She sighed and finally started to talk. Hey, Katsy. It's, uh, it's a crime visual novel, I'd say. A Japanese visual novel translated to English by me. <laughs> um, and uh, it's a little bit, nah, it's not really supernatural, is it? The bonus chapters are actually, but um, I'd say the main story is like Japanese drama, crime, thriller, visual novel, cop story. He was one of my regular customers. She sighed again. I could see that she'd given up now that she told us. Customer? It's an evening club, one of those host ones. It's in one of the busy streets at the foot of the mountain. It's legal, of course, although I haven't thoroughly checked. I'm working there to make ends meet. I thought it was easy, just pretending to have fun with boring middle-aged men every evening. But it wasn't as easy as it sounded. It was just a bunch of sick perverts staring at me like a piece of meat and giving a laundry list of rude sexual advances. Poor girl. <laughs> The more anger would build up inside me, the more clients chose me. Before I knew it, I was the best at the club. Wherever the rumors spread about me, clientele would come to see me. They came to talk to me and give me gifts. 
They were unsuitable for a university student. I couldn't possibly wear those things to school. I think they thought they owned me by giving me all those gifts. It's pretty stupid and a little sad, really. Yeah, she's a host at a host club. Catsy, thank you. One of those idiot customers was Kalaya. We have them in all shapes and sizes at the club, but he was a pretty unbecoming customer. That's true, I never really got the sense that he was clean, but you could have given him a restraining order. He was a big spender. The club wouldn't turn down a cook customer like that. My manager kept insisting I call him, because he'd certainly come to the bar if I called him. Ugh, I hated it so much. She dropped her head and bit her lips, as if all those- bitter lip is probably better? Just single- uh, single lip? As if all those terrible events were coming back to her. I would have offered her a break if Kazumori was still alive, but I kept pushing her to get the answers I needed. He spent a lot of money, he tipped well, he'd do everything I told him to do. Yes, Marino, BB's getting better! He's still recovering. He really was an easy customer. Thanks to him, I got uneasy, yeah. Thanks to him, I got a steady income, but it was extremely stressful. You're a woman, so you understand me, right? Don't you hate requesting something of someone you despise? He was a VIP customer at the bar. This meant I couldn't refuse him or his requests. And then one day he crossed the line. She sighed again, deeply. So it's safe to say that Kaneya was an annoying customer at the club he worked at? What else do you want? Haruka clenched her fists, breathed nervously, and continued. One day, after my shift ended, he made an advance at me for sex. God, it was awful. He said, I've given you so much money, threatened me, saying, You'll. Oh, there's a single. Quotation mark is missing there, after. in front of the Yule. You'll be in trouble if you don't do as I say, you know? And then at the end there, it should be a double quotation mark. Fuck. That bastard. I should have quit. My job isn't that important to me. Uh... Maybe they split it up into two screens again. But yeah, we need extra quotation marks here. I'd rather die than sleep with him. Oh, that then. Ah, I hate mistakes like that. That then should be with an A. I kept avoiding him at all costs. And then, one day... One day, he gave me such a strange gift. What was it? Pile of money! It was inside a convenience store bag. What? He gave me that and said he wanted to buy me until the morning. What a load of shit. What was your answer? Let me ask you this. What would you do in that situation? Me? I would... Oh, sleep with Kanya. <sighs> I would have been afraid. Scary dude, lots of money. If I were you, I would have been afraid. Wonder why he'd go so far for me. Ah, that double quotation mark. Fuck! Can't imagine Kanya having such mature thoughts about another hum human being. And by accepting his offer, things might escalate further. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Haruka continued. So I thought about how I could get myself out of this situation. And I decided to, dece I decided to deceive him. I told him like I was regretting it. Oh, I already have a lover, a different client, so I'm not the person you think I have. I am. I'm not clean anymore, so I can't take your money. Your feelings are too pure. Blech. And I added, let's stop this here. If we don't, there's no knowing what he'll do out of jealousy. What did Kanea say? How did he respond? He cried like a girl, but nothing came out nothing came of it afterwards. It was over. After that happened, however, I noticed that I had accidentally dropped my phone somewhere. Fuck, that's like the worst timing. Ooh, jeez. My chair. <laughs> Scared me. Tomoda was very persistent with, with his calls around that time, flooding my call history. Then a few days later, I heard that Tomoda had been brutally murdered. To be honest, it was actually convenient for me. He was just so damn persistent. Are you saying that Kaneya killed Tomoda? Haruka fe feebly shook her head. Do you think Kaneya could have killed Tamura? What did he say? He said, you don't have to worry anymore. That irritating man is gone now. And he added, maybe you have, to meet this maybe you have me to thank for that. And he started trying things with me again. Did you ask him if he killed Tamura? 
Of course not. I was too afraid to ask that question. What if he admitted it? The way she quickly spat out her words made something inside me start to boil and simmer. If you had told us this sooner, you could have prevented more people from dying. If you were actually competent at your job, maybe. Would you have kept me safe if he was still on the loose and had found out that I was the one that reported him? Or are you wanting me to take responsibility for the loss of your partner because you're blaming me for not reporting it sooner? So harsh. Where does the responsibility end then? You want me to tell me... You want, you want to tell me that Tamara... You want to tell me Tamara died because I was born and met that disgusting guy? I was too scared. I had no one to talk to. Just simply being asked out by Kanaya was not a crime. That's enough. Calm down. Kurada approached her kindly. Tears are streaming down her face and she's agitated. Kurada hands her his handkerchief and tries to calm her down. Thanks for sharing your story, really. You've told us some very fel you, you told you have told us very valuable information. We should let her go, Gigi. We have enough. Okay. Haruka stood up without a word and walked towards the exit, completely ignoring me. Thanks for everything, Haruka. She left the interrogation room without looking at me. She's done. <laughs> <laughs> Turning into a slow cooker. <laughs> After that, Kurada and I go over Minase's testimony together. I think there's a good chance that Kaneya killed Tamura. But there are several issues with that. First and foremost, we don't have a confession from the man himself. We have to check this thoroughly and find proof. We can leave finding proof to the CSI team and Misuza. I need to talk to Kaneya in person. Should we leave that up to the First Division? Ah, uh, now Kurada does say First Division. I'm a little bit inconsistent with that. Kind of sucks. Can you really say that in front of Kazamori's spirit? I really wish this fucking game was just one big file and I could just control F what I, what I need. But that's fucking 290 files. It's such a pain in the ass. This is the case that Kazamori sacrificed his life for. And that's why I need to talk to him myself. I understand what you're saying. He wants to settle the score for our department and not let Kazamori's death go in vain. But haven't you been on the move ever since you were observing Kanaya? Maybe you should take a little break. Hmm. Hello, Ozo. We can't hand this case over to someone else because I need rest. I'm fine. Let me go interrogate him, Kuruda. Please. Mm -mm. Don't underestimate me. Don't underestimate me. I'm not that weak. I know that, but you're very tense right now. Too much has happened. He's right, though. You're like a daughter to me. Oh, dude. Mm. Forgot that I translated this. <laughs> I could never push you around like that. We don't have time for our personal feelings. Please keep your voice down. We wouldn't want the First Division to hear what you really think. We can figure that one out. That's what Kazumori would have said. Ah, why did you have to mention Kazumori? You're making it really difficult to reject your suggestion. All right, I'll let you interrogate Kanaya. Promise you'll play nice, okay? Thank you, sir. This is gonna be my fourth time talking to Kanaya. Really? Oh yeah. I'll make sure to get enough evidence from him this time. Yeah, I just did it in Excel files, Waffle. I uh, For the next game, Shin Hayarigami, Shin Hayarigami 2, the game actually is only seven files total. Each chapter has its own file, so it's super nice. And this time, because it's only seven files, I can work in MemoQ. I don't know if you guys know MemoQ, um, but it's a translation software that I used to use when I still worked at the translation agency. Basically, it keeps track of how you've translated certain words throughout the project. And um, you can even make like, you can enter keywords in that project. So you can say like, okay, I translated this specific term as this. So please keep track of that for me. And then if you do anything else, you get like a warning and the, the software, software will be like, oh, oh, wait, you said it needed to be this. So it's super nice. So I'll be, su I'll be way more consistent next time. Um, the problem is though, that that software that I really like because I used it for, I used it for like, Fuck, when did I start working there? 2012? 
So I've used it for six years working there because I only quit my job a couple months ago there. Um, and um, I've been using that for so long and I really, really like that software. So I was like, you know what, maybe I should just buy it and invest in it. And then uh, I can be way more consistent with my translations. And I looked at the website and the fucking software is like 800 euros. I had no idea it was that expensive. I'm actually still on a license from work. And I'm like, holy shit, 800 euros. <laughs> Um, so what I'm doing right now is I'm still kind of on my work license, my old work license. Um, and I should get paid for Shina Gummy 2. So if I get paid, then I'll use that money to invest in getting my own license. And then it'll all work out, hopefully. Yeah, super expensive. You can get a discount for a company. I am not sure. I didn't see a discount anywhere, but I can look into it, yeah. Um, this time I will finish it. Kazumori, I promise you, I'm going to find out who Blind Man is, once and for all. Uh, fuck, I have to say it. It's bothering me. Beginning up until like half an hour ago, I did THE Blind Man. And now I switched to just Blind Man. So I need to pick one or the other. They both kind of work, but I need to pick one or the other and stick with it, so... All instances of Blind Man, I have to check if it's D or not. Yeah, Traitus is also nice. It's less expensive, but I... I MemoQ is just more... ...polished. Grrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
That's true. If he really was the one who killed Tamara, we need to know how he learned about Blind Man. Please have a listen to our conversation from your seat of honor. You might hear something interesting from the front row. I decided it should be without D. It should just be Blind Man. Well, I hope so. Good luck. Mm, yeah, I'm gonna stop it here for today. Because we're almost at two hours uh, for this session, recording session. And um, it'll be a cool, like, bit to start the next session on before everything starts getting really cool and exciting again. Save. There we go. <laughs> Thank God. Yeah, I think two hours is really the max, both for Bucknari and my voice. <laughs> it's so much work. Nice pause point. Yeah, I think this is a good point. No, oh, nice one. I'm sorry. This is going by too quick. Yeah, it's just also a lot of text. Holy shit. Um, I will run credits. And then I can check in on BB again. Yay. But he's doing so well. I'm going to feed him a little bit more in a bit. We are at 539 subscribers. Holy shit. So nice. Holy fuck. I'm going to be sad if we drop down below 400 again. Sloth, Ed, Fox, Muddy, Lebestia, Niv. Thank you so much for the bits. Thank you everyone who followed me. Such a rare game to find me on. Thank you. Pasta, Belma, Mandy, Couch, Martin, FDY, Gabriel, and Witch. Thank you so much for the subs and resubs. Ed, thank you so much for gifting again. You're too nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. New bit boss. Finally, uh, Cub Scouts has been defeated. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was Shin Gummy for now. I'll probably bring it back in a couple days again. Um, but first, tomorrow we have a hidden object game. Then the day after, we're going to start Fatal Mode for Fatal Frame 1. I'm super excited. Ugh, it's going to be so hard, though. I'm going to be so frustrated. Ah! But I got to do it. If anyone can do it, I can do it, right? <laughs> I got this shit on lockdown, Fatal Frame 1. Um, but yeah, I don't know if Fatal, Fatal Mode is going to be one or two streams. Might be two. It just really depends on how stuck I get or if it's really too hard or not. Maybe I have to load earlier saves. I don't know, you know? Yeah, the hidden object game is going to be a crime thriller-esque kind of hidden object game from Artifacts. So we know it's going to be pretty colors, nice artwork. It's going to be great. Um, so yeah, it's it's a fairly flexible schedule. It kind of depends like how long each game is going to take us. Maybe the hidden object game is going to take two streams. Maybe, maybe Fatal Frame will take two streams. At some point, Pike is going to stream too. He's really close. He only needs one more cable at the moment. And all of his settings are almost done. All of his pop-ups and everything. His merch store is online, by the way. If you liked... Uh, I don't know if you remember those really old... My first merch store. We had... Um, you know the Diamond Dogs logo from Metal Gear Solid? Um, he made two, two more logos in that design and he called them crystal cats and sapphire sloth and they're really really cool and uh i used to sell them on shirts and then he would get the revenue but now he has his own shop so it'll be on his uh twitch page you can go to his uh, merch store if you still want them or if you're interested they're really cool um but yeah that's it for today and uh, it was it was a nice stream. It was a shorter one again, but uh, for Shin Hayagami, two hours is really the max. I think actually you're pretty far into the story, so maybe one more stream should do it. I think uh, only two more hours should probably be it for this game because I used to read so much slower in Japanese, and I would really have to like think about what I was reading and how I would say it in English. Um, and now we're just like racing through the English, so I think just one just one more session of two hours might do it. Uh, maybe a tiny bit longer, maybe a little bit shorter. I don't really know. Um, Asadi, thank you. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, I, I love this game. I I was really like, as I was translating it, I was in agony because I had so much to do and my move was coming up to the Netherlands and it was so stressful. But at the same time, like, I'm so happy reading through this now and thinking like, wow, I did a good job. Like a little pat on the back. I'm really proud of myself that I did this. And even though we're like still going through, I ended up buying the game. Yeah, Buckner. 
Like, even though there's still spelling errors in it, that's why we're going through it now as well, so we can improve the translation even more to have like a near perfect product for anyone who buys it. So it's awesome. I'm really, I'm really happy about this. And of course, Shin Herigami 2 and still the bonus chapters for this game as well. I really want to get to the bonus chapters for this one because there's really cool, they're all like supernatural themed. So uh, what happens with this game is that once you finish the Blind Man game, like the main game, uh, you un unlock extra options, uh, dialogue options. And then if you select that new option, the story takes a whole new turn and it just goes somewhere completely else. I only did one bonus chapter so far. I played it on my own. I recorded it thinking like I might translate it someday. Um, so I have like old, old footage of that. I should probably just re-record it if I want to. Um, but yeah, I need to think about how I'm going to do that because the problem is if I translate it first and then play the English version, I'm already spoiled. I know everything that's going to happen by then. If I record myself playing the Japanese version first, my reactions will be like fresh and it'll be really cool. But that means I would still have to edit in my own translation. So that's something I have to think about. Give myself a ton of editing work, but I will understand the translation better because I have like reference, image reference uh, points, uh, but give myself a ton of editing work as I do it, but my re reactions will be much better. Or translate it first and then play it like I am playing this one, but then I'll know everything that's coming up. So, something I need to think about. But Shinya Yeringomi 2 is happening first. And then after that, I think the bonus chapters are going to happen. I think they still want me to do those, so. Yeah. That's it. That's it for now. Thank you so much, guys, for coming. It was so cool. I'm so glad you guys like it. So tomorrow, Hidden Object Game. I put the stream on 9 p.m., I think, tomorrow? No, no, no. Tomorrow is still set to 11. It's the one after that, the Fatal Frame one, I think. No, the Hidden Object Game. No, wait. Tomorrow's Hidden Object Game. It's a late one. The one after that, Fatal Frame, is set early, but it has to be late because I today a friend of mine from high school was like, I want to come over. And I was like, yeah, cool. But then I was like, fuck my stream. So uh, Saturday is going to be early for sure. The Saturday stream. But the Friday one is going to be late and it's set to early right now. I have to change it. So keep a good eye on the schedule page because um, I'm going to update it. So if you want to check the right time, come back in like an hour or so. <laughs> Thank you guys. It was awesome. I'll see you tomorrow for the hog. Good night.